Assalamualaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, this is a very young faculty of pharmacy. We were established in late 2001, uh, has a full-fledged faculty. And we started with our first intake of students in 2002, in June at that time, with a small group, about 29 students only. And uh, we were in the Twin Towers in Shah Alam, and subsequently we moved here in 2009. So all in all, we're about 12 years old. Well, our first intake was 29 students, but we have sort of escalated. So right now we are 200, about 200 plus. Our staff numbers has increased as well. We started with just a handful of people, and now we're about 94 strong, nine professors, seven associate professors, quite big actually. It's quite a big faculty. In fact, if you were to look at all the schools of pharmacy in Malaysia, we are the biggest in number, also in terms of space. So UITM has been very um, generous to us. And that enables us to expand quite rapidly. Nine professors, seven associate professors, uh, about 40 senior lecturers, and the rest are young people. But actually, the, the people who are very senior are very few, <laughs> about nine of us. Uh, three are expatriates, the rest are local, and uh, the rest are very young people, 30 over and below. So it's actually a very energetic faculty. Visiting professors, we have many. We have many because our standard, our custom is uh, to make sure that for every discipline, there are four major di disciplines in pharmacy, actually five major disciplines, but four departments. We have an external examiner coming for the courses uh, every semester to look at the different disciplines. Visiting, lecturer, visiting professors coming to assess the whole program as a whole has been, uh, oh my God, I did not compile it, but eight or nine actually, quite a lot. Every year we've got somebody coming in to talk to us. Plus, uh, lecturers from the industry, uh, because this is a professional program, so we require the current input in the profession, which is pharmacy, of course. So we got lecturers coming from uh, the Ministry of Health Malaysia, pharmaceutical industries, and friends from all different parts, all the different areas in pharmacy. Uh, we started with uh, the Bachelor of Pharmacy. Actually, uh, prior to being a faculty of pharmacy, the Diploma of Pharmacy was offered by the Department of Pharmacy, which was placed under the Faculty of uh, Applied Sciences, and that was in Jalan Osman. Uh, and then subsequently, the Diploma in Pharmacy program was transferred to Bertam uh, in Pulau Pinang. And then we started with the uh, Bachelor of Pharmacy program into 002 with the first intake then. And a few years later, we started the postgraduate program, the Masters, and the PhD by research. But a uh, couple of years ago, in 2010, we also offered the Masters in Pharmacy Practice, Masters in Clinical Pharmacy by Todd Koss. So right now, we offer six programs. Uh, degree program here, uh, diploma program to produce the, um, the dispensers and the pharmacy assistants in Pulau Pinang, the postgrad programs, Masters by Research and PhD by Research here, and also the Masters in Clinical Pharmacy, Masters in Pharmacy Practice by coursework here too. For Masters in Pharmacy Practice and Masters in Clinical Pharmacy, only pharmacies can attend. And our students are all mostly from the Ministry of Health Malaysia. We want friends. We knew. 14 years old is very young. <laughs> I've been to faculties where they are hundreds of years old, you know. And because of that, we need to make friends in uh, quite a short time. So we started about a couple of years ago, three years ago, with international programs. So we've got two, which are quite successful. Uh, one is international postgraduate uh, conference, international postgraduate conference on pharmaceutical sciences. We call it IPOPS, and that has been running every year. We offered it here. The target population is our students plus you know lecturers and academics from Malaysia. But we also got participation from India and also from Indonesia, also from Thailand, and our speakers are world-class, and it's been very good. So we have held it for three years running, together with another partner, which is the Tokyo University of Science in Japan. So next year, they want to take it to Tokyo, so they want to host it next year in Tokyo. There is also another international conference that we run, which is the International Conference on Nutraceuticals and Cosmet Cosmeticals. Cosmeticals. Uh, we host this conference together with University Indonesia in Indonesia and with Josai University in Japan. So we sort of um, rotate 
So the first conference, we host a conference, and then we went to Indonesia to host it over there. And this year, we're going to Japan. It'll be held in Japan, and next year, it's coming back to us. Uh, recently, we went to Thailand and met with uh, three universities, University Mahido, Silpakon University, Chulalongkorn University. And there are also two other conferences in the offing that we will run with them. One is on quality control of pharmaceuticals, probably with Silpakon University. And the other one is on pharmaceutical sciences, um, probably with Chulalongkorn University. We are still talking about it. Uh, through this, because these are all international conferences and we meet many people, um, the participation is quite international as well, so we make friends. We also get our young lecturers or people who wish to do so to renew their uh, what they call a commitment to the profession to do postdoctorate, postdoctorates. Hostwell has short attachments outside the country, outside the country and also within the country. For young lecturers, especially the people who's just come back with a PhD, who has never had a job experience before, we attach them to the industries. It could be the hospital, it could be a farm skill industry, it could be another factory that has a GMP compliance, which is GMP is good manufacturing practice. We get to course provide students. Uh, we're going to work for co-grants and we get to send our young people everywhere. So that sort of shortcuts the procedure of making friends. Of course, we send our uh, young, our lecturers to other conferences run by other people as well. And that will give exposure to the Faculty of Pharmacy, also to UITM. And with regards to our students, we try to get them industrial attachment at um, industries overseas. For example, in 2011, we sent uh, four students to a GMP uh, certified factory uh, in India. So they went over there, we uh, subsidized part of the uh, expenses and they subsidized the rest. And the year after that, we sent them to Indonesia, about four students. At that time, there was no more money from the university, so they had to pay their own. And right now, we're talking to Curtin University in Australia, also Queensland University in Australia, to send students over there. And um, every year, we accept about two students from Germany. Uh, this year, we only have one plus about 14% of our uh, academic staff are expatriates. So that's sort of bringing the international flavor. We also have many uh, postgraduate students who are foreigners, expatriates. So it feels quite international. We always welcome international collaboration for the lecturers to apply for grants together with their partners. We I always encourage the lecturers to go out, spend short periods of time, two months, three months, you know, during the holidays, to go and uh, learn something new. And we hold a lot of uh, workshops over here. So anybody who comes here will run a workshop for us. We, got, we run a lot of that. Because then we can bring in, um, we can bring in the speaker, or the expert from overseas, they run the workshops over here, and the uh, students and the lecturers can participate. We just had one recently from Queensland, that was Professor Gregory Menthit. He was with us as a visiting professor. So he ran an ethics workshop, also um, you know, some imaging workshop, gave talks. That's quite normal. That's normal for us. I actually feel that if you're an academic, you must always be involved in research. You must do research. You cannot survive just by teaching. And because of that, we have um, inculcated the research culture within the faculty. We expect everybody to hold a grant. We expect everybody to publish. In fact, the faculty has a KPI. Professors must publish at least three in index journals, and then the associate professors too, and the young lecturers at least one. At least one. So because of that, we have been very successful in getting grants. So last year, there were 77 research grants and we brought in three, more than 3 million ringgit to the faculty. Uh, set, up to September this year, there are 12 research grants. The value came to more than 1 million. I think this is um, under underestimation. Plus there was a 1 million something grant that came in this year, so it could be about 2 million something. Now, I haven't got the latest, but up to September, it was 1 million, 1.1 million. Uh, pretty good. So last year, uh, staff of the Faculty of Pharmacy published 80 index publications and this year the count is up to about 57. I'm sure more is coming, you know in December they will start putting in into Prisma all the publications. Dex 2014, the faculty back three golds, eight silvers and five bronze. And then um, two of our people went to uh, ITEX. So Dr. Wani Rani, for example, with a Ribati, got a goal at ITEX 2013. And Dr. Long, with his reflexology kit, uh, got a goal also at ITEX 2014. So we are working, we do the research, you need the evidence, you turn it into a product, and we're working towards that. But of course, you know, 
uh, it takes time. We have uh, established certain core centers to support research. For example, we have the um, imaging center, we call it image, where all the high-end uh, microscopes are there. You know, the high-end microscopes are there. And that brought in about almost 200,000 this year. That's about the same amount last year. But of course, that money is uh, channeled to the university through the KTP fund. So we have core centers to support the research. For example, we have the histology center, and we have our imaging center that has been uh, sort of making money for us about almost 200,000 per year. And then we also have the uh, NMR center, uh, which has been utilized not only by UITM um, uh, people, but also by people from outside as well, researchers from outside. Um, uh, besides, we are running, we are getting ready our GMP plan. GMP plan for small scale manufacturer pharmaceuticals and also our retail pharmacy outlet. So in the future, that will be bringing some money for us. That was initially started by us and at that time it was Institute Kajian Ubat Semulajadi but because it grew and it was showing um, strength in publishing and getting the grants and so on, so it was given, uh, it was recognized by the university and start up a food, uh, yeah, standalone, yeah. So from the, from the faculty, we have a uh, Core centers, core centers such as Atawuraman Institute of Natural Products, also I promise. When there is a new pharmacy program that is started, the pharmacy board together with MQA, it is a joint technical committee, will come in every year. So when the first batch has graduated, you will be given full recognition. So we, we, we obtained our full recognition, uh, the first one, in 2006. That was for five years. And in 2012, in 2012, the Baga Pharmacy with the uh, MQA Joint Committee came again to accredit us and we got another five years. So we are due for another visit in about end of 2015 or early 2016. Uh, a big program that we run in every year will be what is known as Public Health Pharmacy, previously known as Brain Awareness Initiative or Brain. So what we do is uh, all the students, the students together with the faculty members will go to a community where we work with the community, it's a full day event up till night. So we work with the community to clean up, we give awareness on pharmaceuticals, we do some health screening and whatever they need help, we will help. At the night, uh, normally the students, faculty members, together with the people in that community, will be working together. It's like a rewang, you know, you cook together, you eat together and you discuss. It's a total interaction. Uh, the last one that we had was in uh, Kampung Jaya Sia Ijo on the 17th of May. But um, other programs that we run, there is another program called Pharmacor, which is Pharmacy Community Outreach Program. So our students with faculty members go to Chowkit uh, at a place known as Cure and Care Service Center. This center looks after, you know, extra addicts and people who, and the people who, the displaced people, you know, homeless children. So we do that. That's also a regular with us. Uh, every year we'll do that because I think it is good for the students to know because uh, pharmacies have a role in, you know, in uh, the methadone replacement therapy for drug addicts and so on. So it's good to expose them early and what they can do to help the displaced people. Also, we, our students and our alumni also, you know, our lecturers, alumni and the students as well, go to, you know, what they call it, orphanages, old folks home and so on to clean up. And I was thinking that uh, it is high time that we sort of adopt a whole village, <laughs> a whole community and do this yearly. It will be continuous. Then we will see, we want, we want to see it mature, something that is, uh, we're going to start soon. We're thinking of how to do it. But definitely there's a lot of this kind of activities going on. Of course, during Ramadan, there's iftar and, and together with our and so on. Medicine counselling is always there. In any activity that we do, there is always the students, the alumni, our alumni will come back with us, our lecturers. We have our counselling table so that we can look. And at the same time, um, we borrow bicycles from Puncha Alam administration. Uh, the students and the lecturers elsewhere cycle. They cycle to the homes and we do home medication review. For example, when they go to the homes, you look at what sort of drugs, how they keep the drugs, you know, did they know about the drugs, how they take the drugs and so on. Because even the most effective drug will not be effective if the patient is not compliant, i.e. if the patient is not taking the drug. Definitely interaction between faculty staff and the students and the alumni and the goodwill that we have the people, the goodwill and the continuous support. But I do understand that we have been going to different places every year. 
So that is the reason why in the future we have to adopt a community that we follow continuously such that we can measure and get the returns and see what are the returns. Now with regards to entrepreneurship, um, because I believe that you know we teach the students about pharmacy, at the end of it some of them will work in the hospital, some will go to the industry, some will have to set up shop. So they will set up the pharmacy shops. So we need to give the knowledge. So right from year one, we have workshops. We call it um, Entrepreneur Workshop for Pharmacy. So we get the people who set up their own uh, pharmacies and they're successful to talk about the experience in the workshop, you know, how we set up a pharmacy, what are difficult difficulties you will pose, how to get the money, how to expand and so on. So we do that quite regularly. And we continue on to the workshops on how to care for the patients, the pharmaceutical care. So I think once you give them the knowledge on how to do about it, it will speed up the process of turning our graduates into uh, entrepreneurs. For example, even though we're only 12 years old, we have produced about 800 over graduates from the Bachelor of Pharmacy program, but six of them have got their own retail shops, which is quite good. And we follow this. We, in fact, put a KPI on the faculty to see how many percent of our graduates set up shops. We are uh, resource-rich right now in terms of staff, space, equipment, and um, the ability of the young people to get the grants and uh, go straight into the research. Because research is important to get the evidence. Because whatever pharmacy does, whether in terms of drugs, or the cosmetics or the uh, nutraceuticals, it all has to be evidence-based. So that is core to the practice of pharmacy. So we have people doing that. Now what else? I talked to some alumni when I was in uh, Kota Kinabalu just two months back. Uh, no, no, even a month back. And I asked them, what is it that we have given you that you keep in yourself? They actually said, they said that they have the core knowledge. They have the core knowledge. They know about pharmacy. It took them a long time actually, they went back, they thought about it, and they came back and told me. And they said that you instilled a sense of loyalty in us. So we realised that whatever knowledge you give to us, we must transfer. So whenever there is an activity in the rural areas, most people are not very, you know, it's not so easy to go to the rural areas, right? In summer, for example, they said we will go because we know it's a duty. So we are very loyal to what you have given to us. And I thought that was very good. And because they are loyal towards us, when we say help us, they want to come, they want to help. And that we have to, um, to utilize and make better. I actually need more pharmacies. And uh, if you get the entry scale for pharmacies coming into academia, it's lower than what they can get outside. It's lower by quite a lot. Salary-wise. Salary-wise. So I'm not able to attract the bright ones, the young ones, because we need to nurture, we got to develop all the pharmacy areas. Uh, even though we have about 94 staff, but uh, the number of pharmacies in the faculty is relatively very small. So that cannot continue. So I must think of ways of getting the bright brains, our alumni or other, from other universities coming here to serve so that we can, yeah, that's a challenge, that's a real challenge. Faculties of pharmacy have, do not find it so easy to get pharmacies to come in as academics because during their stay with us, they make them work really hard <laughs> because pharmacy is not so easy, you know. You got to spend from the chemistry up to the production, up to what is happening in the body, the clinical. <laughs> so it's very broad. So they have to work really, really hard. They go out and once they're registered and they go out, they can earn big salaries. So to get them to do, to do another two years or one year of master's, another four years of PhD, three to four years of PhD is very difficult. So I think the entry must be um, looked at, remediation and entry. We brought, we lump, we sort of bring in the, all these little areas, the specific areas into one broad area. We call it pharmacy practice or clinical pharmacy. But when we have the people, the expertise, definitely we'll segregate and go deeper. Sure. Because, and that is our vision, because in the, if you look at what is happening in uh, developed countries, it is all about patient care. So the pharmacies are specialists. The pharmacists, the pharmacists will know the condition really well and the drug really well and they are able to dispense of because they know it really well, you know. So that is coming to Malaysia as well because we're reaching developed nation status. Everybody is very conversant with the IT and get information very easily. So they were one.
the patient care that the pharmacies can offer. So we have to prepare for that. At the same time, our country wants to develop the generic medicines. So one of the NKA, new key economic um, areas is to produce, to increase, well, to strengthen the pharmaceutical industry so that we can produce more generics. For example, if you look at India, uh, about maybe about 20 years ago, they focused on producing medicines. So India is the medicine supplier <laughs> of the world now. Uh, Malaysia has not, we have been importing. We got a few companies producing, but not enough. So we're about 30 to 50 years behind people and we have to play catch up. It's a lot of work. We're Muslims. So the ethics, the most Islam ethics must always be there underlying what we do. And of course, we look at, we make our students aware of halal. We want to produce halal. You don't want to do anything that is haram. But uh, when we talk about Western practices, it's actually ethical practices, which is the basis of Islamic principles, to be ethical, to protect, to do no harm. We can develop the expertise. We definitely can develop the expertise. But because the pharmacies, academics are very few and not enough. So there are so many pharmacy areas to cover. For example, uh, if you look at CTC in Sungai Bulu, they will need, um, we will send our pharmacist academics to also practice over there. We hope that they will run the MTEX. MTEX is Medication Therapy Adherence Clinics. Yeah. Because as I said before, the best medicine is not effective unless the person takes it, <laughs> which is compliance actually. So we need to explain to the patients what is it that they get, you know, how to get the maximum effect and to make them compliant. So that's the, the reason why, you know, plus the MTEX will also look at uh, the changes in their body, at least the drugs and so on. So I need many, many pharmacies because if you look at other faculties of pharmacy, for example, Penang, Penang is about 40 years old, but they have about 40. 40 lecturers only pharmacies. We have many lecturers, uh, majority are non pharmacies. The pharmacies are few, but I need to increase that. I need, really. And the only stumbling block is the entry remuneration. What salary do we pay them at entry? Because medicine is more established, so they can get the retired professors. Uh, pharmacy, there was only one pharmacy school for such a long time from USM, you know, so we do not have as much a choice as the medicine. We would like to produce more pharmacy entrepreneurs, definitely, in line with what the university wants, and we are uh, following that. We want to be a pace setter in pharmacy, uh, if not within the region, within the country at least. And for that, we will always, we're always looking at world standards. We comply with the Malaysian standards. We will always comply with the Malaysian standards, but we're also looking at what other people are doing outside. And um, we would like to be a referral centre uh, for the different disciplines in pharmacy. Basically, we want to be the best, <laughs> like everybody else. We want to produce excellent work and be recognised for it.